Hello everybody, um, because literally one person requested it, I'm going to do a tutorial video on how to uh, use RPG Maker from uh, from scratch. So it's just going to be uh, some basic stuff in this first video. Um, so if you've obviously used it before or have some knowledge then this probably isn't going to be for you and hopefully um, I'll be making some more. So maybe they will be of more use uh, the future ones. Okay, so to start with, before I even click a button on here, um, the way I find is the best way to make a game like this is to know what you want to achieve from your game, how long you want it to be, and a general idea, at least. These are the three, three main things that you need to start off with anyway. Obviously you need the program. <laughs> And you can obviously get the light version on Steam, uh, which is free. It doesn't have as many tile sets and stuff. Um, and even with the paid version, you can actually download uh, extra tile sets and things from the uh, web from the RPG Maker website for uh, quite a lot of money. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, it's up to you. Maybe try out the light first and then uh, convert it over and, and use it that way. Uh, okay. So, uh, first thing first, we'll start by making a new project. Um, so I don't really know what. Uh, just a, so, file can be called that, and the game title can be. Uh, we'll call it demo. Demonstrational video. Okay, so this is what you get when you start up. And it depends really where you want to start. There's a couple of things you can do. Uh, so you do uh, you do have the database now. You can literally waste hours and hours on this, getting all this the way you want it. And there's so many, so many different things to do on this. Uh, it would take me forever to do it. Um, so one of the things I'm going to do to start off with is we're going to change one of the actors. Uh, oh no. Actually, I have a better idea. We're going to use the. If we're going to do that, I'm going to use the character generator, which is one of the new things we have on here. Uh, so, to create your own character, uh, you can actually generate random ones, which give you really strange and uh, funny looking characters. Or you can obviously make it yourself. Uh, so, I am going to make someone that looks vaguely like me, I suppose. Dark brown, brown eyes. Oh, come on, I need spiky hair. No. Come on. Ooh, I like the sideburns. Anyway, I'm getting distracted now. Um, problem is, it's because the back bit of the hair is too long. Uh, <laughs> you're making bold of a quiff at the front. That's quite funny. Uh, <laughs> what's that like? Uh, okay, this isn't going to look like me. But that doesn't matter. Uh, you basically obviously make them however you want them to look. I'm going to give him, yeah, receding hairline and, and uh, big sideburns. That's great. Uh, so, um, and there's lots of like nice little neat things on here. It just basically it differentiates uh, your characters from the, obviously from the vanilla ones, uh, which aren't the best. Some of them actually look okay and. I've used a couple in mine, um, just because the ones they've got, just because they look a bit different, because um, after a while all these start to look the same. Uh, so, no, don't like them having their mouth open really. They smile. Uh, I'm gonna give my beard. Ooh, too bushy. Gunslinger mustache. Yeah, okay. Reads in the light meter. Uh, one thing to remember as well is that um, this bit here doesn't actually match up with the sprite down here. So try as best as you can to make sure that they do actually um, match up. And I can't remember which one the armor is on this one. Uh, well, that's not quite, but that'll do. Um, so that's how my character is going to look. And then you then have to output the face and 
the um, character as well. So he's going to be called Van Berman. So we will save him there and save the the character like that as well. Okay, so that's the character made. You then go to the database again, uh, and we've got obviously got Eric there, uh, but we're going to change him to Van Berman. Uh, uh, class and stuff, we will worry about that later. And then this is where you get to import your character graphic, so the sprite. And it comes up straight away, Van Berman, and you can just add them like that. And the same thing goes for the face as well. Uh, you can change starting equipment and stuff, but that's not really necessary at the moment. And there we go, we have a slightly different uh, main character there. Which, uh, obviously for whatever reason, he's starting in the middle of the sea. Which uh, is no good. We can't see him move around if there's if there's sea everywhere. Uh, so one of the things I recommend doing, at least uh, as a starting point, is just to use some of the um, use some of the maps that are already available. Uh, just as a starting point, just to get used to the game, and because the great thing about it is you can still modify it yourself however you want to do it. Uh, so I actually use this one um, for my opening, uh, for the start of my actual game. And then what you can do is you can change it to the event mode, which then allows all these different um, events to obviously take place. And you can make it so that your main character starts in that position there. Uh, that's going to delete it all, isn't it? Right. Sorry, I was being silly then. Okay, so we'll do the same again, and we'll right-click on there to bring up that, and then click in the player. So there he is, and there's him starting in the map, and just to check that it works, which it will do, obviously. Um, oh, wait, I've not checked to make sure if it's free. <laughs> ah, that's really loud. <laughs> uh, that's annoying. Uh, hold on, I will have to turn it down as soon as it comes on. Uh, no, it's not working. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes it's... There we go. Sometimes it's a little bit temperamental. It doesn't want to start up sometimes and, uh, and not. Uh, so what, you use the up and down keys and the enter button. Uh, so you click on new game. And there we have it, there's Van Berman running around. Uh, now, VX does also have a sprint button as well. Uh, you use shift for that. Uh, in my game, in most of the areas, I've actually disabled it. Just to make it a bit easier. Uh, so there he is, running around, and everything's fine. Obviously, there's nothing going on here. There's no objective or anything. But you can tell that we have a new, uh, different main character in the game. And you can actually press escape, and it will bring him up like that. So we check that all that works, and that's our first map and a new main character right there. Because uh, we've not actually made any, we've obviously got this using the sample map. Um, and I've actually just realised something that um, it's not going to be showing the cursor, is it? Oh dear! I always make these silly mistakes, and it really annoys me. Uh, oh well, well now we have the cursor back. You can on pencil mode so this just allows you to add in a block of each so I've just gone for the plain grass and I'm just going to add it over the lake lake pond <laughs> and obviously you can do that singly and click it like that although you also then you also have the use of the to draw a rectangle so it just covers a huge rectangle area which is also good and then you have the circle as well so obviously that comes out and covers circularly. I've not actually found any use for the circular one as of yet, but you know, and you also have the fill as well and the shadow pen. Um but obviously sample maps of the shadows done and if you want light coming from a certain direction and stuff, that's what you have to use that for. 
and obviously we don't want to just fill it full of uh, uh, full of grass. So, uh, and one of the things I did on my first was obviously just to create a bit of a sort of like skirmish type feel. Uh, so there is somewhere, and we're we'll going to find it now. But there is on one of these tiles you can get um, skeletons, I think, or something. Right, well I can't see it, but never mind. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, so you can just dot these around the place, I guess. Give it sort of a, that's a bit too many. Um, but gives it sort of, obviously a different feel to obviously a pond or whatever. And obviously that's just stuff you have to do for yourself in the map and decide what you want to do with it. Uh, so I'll show you one of the other things about that's very important with maps as well is you have map properties. So you can change the name um, depending on what it is or depending on what sort of the part of the game you're on. Um, it just because the thing is that in the names they're for you they're to help you organize your maps. So for example you want this to say for me I want it to say start map because it's the map that I'm starting off with obviously. So that makes that a lot easier. Um, for me to be able to use and everything but then you also get the display name now you can have that come up when you enter and leave maps so you might want to call it uh, you might want to call it skirmish because that's what's gone on and that might that might be what you decide the name of the map to be and uh, therefore just makes it just gives it a bit more something just makes it look better there you go that's better and here you can obviously change the width and the height and the height of the map so uh, makes it longer wider obviously when you're making your own maps that's more applicable to then rather than now when we're just using uh, the ready-made ones and we have the battle back so this is what you will see when you fight enemies coming up uh, so that one's actually quite fine obviously because it's already done for us so that's great uh, this is, I will go through this later, it's not really that important at the moment. And then of course you have the random battle encounters. Uh, so to start off with, the weakest enemy by default is the slimes. And it's done by a whole map, so that means on the whole of that map you will encounter slimes. Um, and then what you can also do is, you can add another one, so you want them to encounter bats as well. But, let's say you want them to encounter more bats than slimes because your that's how your your map is what is uh, more focused towards. So what you can do is if you want twice as many bats as slimes, half that value. So you've got ten and five. So there's more chance they're going to encounter bats than they're going to encounter slime. So that's easy. Uh, steps average. I've had to mess around with this and anything less than thirty. And lots of people have said that there's just too many random battles. So, I don't know, maybe have a play around with it yourself and see what you like. Uh, anything around 30 seems to be fine for me. Uh, so 30 is fine, leave it. And obviously you can just check now to make sure everything's working. Always remember to save your changes to your game. Otherwise obviously it doesn't take effect. Remember that it sometimes doesn't work and closes itself, no reason. And then keeps doing so over and over again. Hmm. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll show that next time when I've got it working. And that'll do, I think that'll do for the first video. Just a quick, a very, very quick showing on how you would start up your game. Uh, but as I say, we've got to remember that the key things are knowing how long you want your game to be, having a general idea of it. You know, these things are most important because they allow you to have your direction so you know you're gonna know what your first map's gonna be you're gonna know you're gonna know where the main areas are that you're gonna need to build you might need to build a castle for example or you might need to build I don't know a hideout in the desert uh, just taking an example from my my game <laughs> and you know it's not they're not easy but you have to know that you want to do these things and that allows you then to look through obviously sample maps and it gives you a chance to look and see what's there and see what you can adapt or different sort of bits you can steal from there which is quite useful uh, so thank you very much for tuning in and in the next one I'll get the gameplay working so I can show you the random battles 
Okay, guys. Goodbye.